So now I'm going to talk about how MSCs can affect tissue repair. And I'm going to use two examples, two papers. One was on spinal cord injury, and the other one was on heart failure. And so uh, Dr. Lee at Buff University of Buffalo, um, he gave uh, MSCs to a hamster model. Let me just read this and make sure. Yeah, okay, I won't read anymore. So he gave, he gave MSCs to a hamster model of heart failure. He injected them intravenously, and the heart failure got better, improved dramatically. And, but he went to look for these cells, bless you, uh, he went to look for these cells in the heart, and very few of them were actually in the heart, a very small percentage. And so then he thought, well, that's interesting because I got this wonderful effect, but very few of the cells are in the heart. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject the cells into the hamstring muscle and see what happens. So he injected the cells in the hamstring muscle, and all of them remained in the hamstring muscle, got the same effect on the heart. And then he thought, wow, maybe it's what they're secreting. Because they're all there, it has to be what they're secreting. So then he took the cells and cultured them, and then he took the soup that they were growing in, so essentially the secretions of the cell, and he injected those intramuscularly three times a week instead of once a week trying to mimic what the cells were producing and got the exact same benefit. So it kind of tells us that the benefit is not the cells remodeling tissue going in and becoming something, it's more the, the trophic effects of the cells. This was done in Taiwan. This was a rat study of, uh, they, used umbil they used human umbilical MSCs um, for uh, a spinal, where they cut the spinal cord. So they cut it completely, and, and when they cut it completely, it retracts a little bit, so there's a little gap in there. And they put human MSCs in a fibrin glue, which is basically a, a clotted blood product, clotted uh, liquid part of the blood product. And they put it around and inside the gap. And uh, so what they found was that they got restoration of function, and the spinal cord actually re-sprouted and, and grew to itself. So here was the, this was the number of nerve fibers. So there's a control on the left. And then the stem cell, you can see that that was the increase of more than four times increase in nerve fiber over the control. And then the NCM, was that's the conditioned medium from the cells, so the actual the soup of the cells was implanted also, and you got some benefit, but it wasn't nearly as good as when the cells were implanted. So the cells are, were there for this period of time uh, secreting these trophic factors right where they were needed for the spinal cord to repair itself. So the, the, the take home there is, I, I don't have a slide of the tissue, but uh, they showed slides of the tissue and they, because they were human cells, they're able to use a, a technique to, to look for human cells in the, in the spinal cord that had regrown. And they found human cells there, but they were very low in number and they were not nerves. They weren't neur neural tissue at all. They were just trapped between the fibers, between the nerve fibers. So the, the, the take home message there is the cells were there and they helped the spinal cord to repair itself, but they did not do so by becoming nervous tissue. They did so by whatever they secreted. So now I'll talk a little bit about uh, immunomodulation or immune modulation and uh, what, what the cells do in the case of autoimmune diseases mechanistically. So uh, MSCs secrete these molecules that I talked about on Dr. Kaplan, uh, on Dr. Kaplan's slide. And this is where they basically block this cascade. So you have an activated T cell. The activated T cell then produces all these other helper T cells, cytotoxic T cells, and memory T cells. And the, the cytotoxic T cells are what pr are problematic. You get this army of cytotoxic T cells in multiple sclerosis, diseases like multiple sclerosis, and uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And what the MSCs, the trophic factors from the MSCs, where they have their activity is at that level of activation. They don't inhibit the activation, but they inhibit the clonal expansion or this creation of armies of these cells. So um, I just did a quick search on clinicaltrials.gov, which is National Institutes of Health. Uh, database of all clinical trials that are going on right now. And uh, I looked at the number of trials using MSCs for autoimmune diseases, and this is the list of uh, cases. Uh, you can read it, but uh, multiple, uh, uh, the 
multiple sclerosis is number one. They have nine, uh, there are nine clinical trials going on right now, and type one diabetes is number two with eight, and then lupus and rheumatoid arthritis round out the top indications. So it tells us that worldwide there are a lot of people doing studies on uh, MSCs uh, for autoimmune diseases. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about, about safety. So uh, bone marrow and fat are autologous, meaning from your own body, so there's very little downside for that. Uh, but what about donor cells? What about donor MSCs? So just go back in history a little bit. Uh, there have been thousands of transplants in the U.S. for bone marrow re uh, reconstitution. Whole, whole cord blood, which also contains MSCs, was given in the 1930s in the U.S. as a replacement for blood. Uh, in, in 2003 in Lancet, there were 128 patients given cord blood there with no adverse effect, effects. In 2005, 413 units of cord blood in another paper given with no adverse events. So this is an interesting phenomenon that most people find strange, but mothers basically receive stem cells from their babies when they, uh, when they carry their babies. And in this, this study in The Lancet, uh, every woman that had had a male child, this went up to 53 years after having the child, they were having chest surgery. And during the chest surgery, they took some bone and bone marrow, and they found male, male cells in there. So um, these cells are 50% genetically distinct because half of the genes come from mom and half come from dad, and yet these cells engraft in mom and stay there for a long period of time. And it was once thought that mothers have a higher incidence of certain autoimmune diseases, and that's been prospective trials, that's been shown to be the opposite. They actually have a lower incidence of autoimmune disease, and they thought it was because of this microchimerism or this donation of the stem cells from the baby to the mom but the opposite is actually true. And this is another interesting phenomenon. The lifespans of mothers in this study increased linearly up to 14 children. So it's basically a third a year of life uh, per child that in this cohort. So the more kids you have, the longer you live. Up to 14 and then things get a little dicey. So going towards safety again, going going to clinicaltrials.gov, there are 85 clinical trials being performed right now using allogeneic or donor MSCs for a variety of conditions. So all of these things have to go through uh, institutional review board at, uh, to weigh the risk-benefit ratio, and so you have 85 trials that are ongoing right now. Uh, they've been Allogeneic or donor MSCs from bone marrow have been, now been approved in, the U, in Canada and in New Zealand. A company called Osiris has a product that's uh, been approved for uh, the treatment of graft-versus-host disease, which is a very severe autoimmunity from a, from a donor uh, situation. And even more recently, umbilical cord MSCs have been approved in South Korea for the treatment of osteoarthritis. So those are the first, and this all happened within the last seven months. So the, uh, the approvals are coming. This is also an interesting phenomenon. There, uh, in the last 13 years, there have been one and a half million corneal transplants. And a corneal transplant will not take unless you transplant limbal cells also. Limbal cells are cells that are found, so like if here's the cornea in the center of your eye, the limbal cells are, are out here on the, on the white portion of the eye, and those have to be taken off, scraped off, and grown in the laboratory. Sometimes they can be used directly, but mostly they're grown in the laboratory, and then they're transplanted with the cornea, and then the corneals will stay. So uh, that's been done a million and a half times in 13 years, and, eat, and those limbal cells have recently been demonstrated to be MSCs. So they're basically scraping MSCs off the eye, growing them up in the lab, they put them on with the new cornea, and then the new cornea will stay. And this is a phenomenon, another thing that MSCs are good for and, and being studied a lot for is their ability to inhibit rejection. So it, there, there are kidney trials now where they give MSCs and the people that receive the MSCs with the kidney are able to go off their immunosuppressive drugs. So uh, anyway, so there's a million and a half times uh, where they've been transplanted safely. So when we uh, discovered the, M the MSC from the uh, menstrual blood, 
we wanted to, uh, Metastim USA wanted to uh, uh, use that in humans, and so in the process of getting the investigational new drug uh, application approved by the FDA, we had to do uh, some trials. And the one question the FDA had was, do those cells, uh, if somebody were to come in, because the IND is for limb ischemia, so not enough blood flow to the lower legs, so if somebody were to come in and get those cells, would they promote existing tumor growth if they happen to have a tumor that was not clinically diagnosed? So we had to do a study of an established tumor model. And so what we did is we used a glioma model in a rat. So it's basically a brain tumor in a rat. And then we, had, we gave them, uh, it gave them the, the cells both intravenously in the vein and also directly into the tumor, which is what was requ requested. And what happened was the exact opposite. The, the tumors actually were 50% smaller in the treated animals. And the, the middle, the middle the, that's the control. And the, the middle bar was given intravenously, and the second bar was actually directly into the tumor. So the exact opposite was found. Um, this is a study that was done at Kansas State University. They used established, they established a, uh, a breast tumor, basically it's a breast cancer model. They put it subcutaneously. I'll show you a picture where they injected the tumor cells and the tumor forms, and then they injected them with a single injection of umbilical MSCs, either into the tumor or into the vein. And what they found was, well, you can read the, the title, basically all the tumor cells, the, the entire tumor disappeared, and there were no evidence of metastatic disease or, or cells going anywhere else in the body 100 days later. So all the animals were cured of cancer. And, and it didn't matter which route of administration they used, they used both intrathecal, or intratumoral and intravenously, and it worked the same. And uh, the one thing that they postulate is that, you know, cancer has stem cells too, and if you can induce that, those cancer stem cells to undergo down, uh, you basically to commit suicide, then, then you won't have cancer in it. The cancer will disappear because there's nothing feeding it. And that's what they proposed in the, the, in the study is that's what had happened. And it has been shown that you can get tumor cells, we co-mingle MSCs with tumor cells, the tumor cells typically undergo program cell death or cell suicide, if you have the concentration right. So here's a picture of the, uh, that was the vehicle, phosphate buffered saline on the left, and you can see the tumor uh, on the right. Uh, this is uh, one of the rats that was treated with the intravenous. Um, and the next slide shows the, um, the, the ones that weren't, that didn't, uh, that received the saline treatment, uh, they were sacrificed because once the tumor volume gets to a certain size, the ethics committee has you sacrifice the animal. And then the, uh, basically by both routes of administration, the black, black diamond line is directly into the tumor and the uh, white box line is uh, inter intravenously. And uh, they, by 42, 46 days, all the tumors are gone in all the animals. <clears throat> So that's about all I have. I just to summarize, you know, the MSCs are, they, they home to a damaged area. They tend to persist for a period of time and they secrete proteins that stimulate regeneration, uh, that uh, sort of correct immune abnormalities, decrease inflammation. They're relatively safe. They appear to be non-tumorigenic and they seem to be well tolerated in our patient population. So thank you very much. Thank you.